Excuse me, uh, Mr. Spencer? Hi. I'm Frank Hall. Oh, sure, you're going to start teaching tonight, aren't you? Yes, uh-huh. How do you do? Uh, uh, have a seat. Can I get you some coffee? Uh, no, I'd better not. Uh, I've kind of got butterflies. Well, I don't blame you, first night, new students. With your experience, I think you'll be fine. Well, I don't know. Uh, the math coordinator said that this class was going to start with fractions. Now, that seems like a pretty hard concept to teach adults. Yes, it can be. A lot of people seem to be afraid of fractions. I wonder why that is. People have a very narrow view of fractions. Whenever I say fractions, people think of, well, think of something like this. They think of fractions as pieces of something. Well, but fractions are pieces of things, aren't they? Well, sure, but there's lots of other ways to think about it. Ways that will help people compute with fractions? Uh-huh. Suppose you're in church. Pick up your songbook to sing a hymn. Notice the guy next to you doesn't have his, so you share yours. It doesn't sound much like math, but it can be expressed as 1 over 2. Oh, I see, yes. Now, that's quite different from thinking of one half as a piece of something. You didn't uh, tear the songbook in half. It's just one book shared by two people. Right. And you look around, and you notice other people seem to be sharing a book with two other people. Well, then it's one book for three people. That's one over three. Mm -hmm. uh, two over six, three over nine, and so forth. Right. You can do this with any fraction. might be a good idea to have your students develop uh, rational families for other fractions. Uh, I've got some worksheets that might help you on this. Here they are. Take a few of these. They might help you out. Okay, I'll uh, try them. Thanks. I usually try to tie in rational numbers with a number line concept. Start at zero. We go right one space at a time. Spaces are all the same. And the numbers are always the same distance apart. And this line, of course, goes on forever. Yes, numbers don't ever end. They just go on forever, clear to infinity. Right. They never end. We just quit trying to name them. Hmm. Does knowing that do the students any good? They need to have at least have a feel for it. It makes a number system seem more orderly. Or at least helps them to understand that there is a system. Right. Now, this next step is a very important concept, especially when we're talking about fractions. You need to show your students that in between these segments, say between uh, 0 and 1, there are just as many possible numbers as there are possible numbers to the end of the line. Okay. Now, how do I help them see that? Well, a number line has numbers from 0 to infinity, right? Right. But uh, that doesn't help them to see the infinite possibilities between the whole numbers. Oh, it doesn't. But perhaps this chart will help. Now, do you tie this into the number line and to sharing the hymn books? Mm-hmm. Start by looking at one. One book to one person would be the relationship of one over one. One book to one person. But then if two people share the same book, then the rate of sharing is less than one to one. Mm -hmm. That's where you can show them the families on this chart. If the rate is less than one, we have to move into common fractions. It's pretty easy to see how one half will be about midway through this first space. It's harder to see how all the numbers in this family can be stacked up at this one point on this line. Mm -hmm. And it's even harder to understand that those fractions just go on forever. You might remind them of the song books, one book to two people. Mm -hmm. Two books for four people, three books for six people, and so forth. And all the same family of numbers and all the same rate of sharing. And if it's one book for three people, we'd move to this section. Uh-huh. One book for three people, two books for six people, and on and on to infinity. Yeah, I think this will help a lot. It will help, too, when I'm looking for common denominators. Now, how does that work? Show them one-third and one-half. Then find an expression for each that has a common denominator. Well, now, six is a common denominator. So, uh, here we have two-sixths, and here we have three-sixths. Okay. One-half is the same as three-sixths. And one third is the same as two six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Good. But you know, it uh, it seems to me that people have a lot of trouble with numerators and denominators. You know, knowing whether the numerator is on the top or the bottom and uh, what those terms really mean. I explain it like this: 
A denominator is the same thing as a name. Okay, so we have a half and a six. This is the same as saying elephant or bison. A numerator is how many of those things we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I suppose you could have a fraction that said uh, four over bike. <laughs> yeah. Or uh, seven over car. Exactly. And you can show them why you need to find common denominators, mm -hmm. like we did with the sixth on the chart. You mean that if you try to add four bikes and seven cars, you come up with nothing. Right. But if we change the name to vehicles, which will be our common denominator, we can add them. Mm -hmm. Four vehicles plus seven vehicles equals 11 vehicles. Right. If you want to, you can go back to the chart and show them how you changed one half to six and how you change one third to six mm -hmm. to add them. Mm -hmm. And you just add the numerators, not the denominators, just like we did here with the vehicles. It's about time for your class. Why don't I go down there with you and introduce you? Well, good. It would make it a whole lot easier for me if you could be there for a minute or two. My pleasure. Hello, I'm Steve Wise. And for the next 10 programs, I will be reviewing each scene with you. Here are a few things you should remember from this scene. One, there are as many numbers between one and zero as there are numbers from zero to infinity. Two, these numbers between one and zero are called common fractions. Three, each fraction is a member of a family of which there are as many equivalent members as there are numbers. Four, a fraction has two terms, numerator and denominator. Denominator means name. Numerator means the number of items of that name being considered. Five, in adding or subtracting fractions, the common name, denominator, can be found by selecting members of the same name from the families of two fractions. Now that you have met Frank and David, let's meet the class. Martha, had a rough day? You know that guy that says that anything that can go wrong will? Well, he's right. What do you mean, Murphy's Law? I am a perfect example. My car won't run, the sink ran over, and I broke my key off in the door. At least you made it. Oh, I don't know that that's so great. I came here tonight to introduce your new teacher. This is Frank Hall. He taught here some years ago, then he opened his own business. I understand he made quite a lot of money, too. <laughs> now, for some strange reason, he's decided he wants to try teaching again. <laughs> Glad to have you back, Frank. Thanks, David. It's all yours. Hey, treat him right, okay? <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Let's see if you're all here. Gene Arkell. Here. Sue Bird. Here. Barbara Desiato. Here. Ken Nose. Here, sir. Barb Howard. Harriet Johnson. Present. Todd Mills. Right here. Graylin Nailing. Here. Bill Pendle. Here. Nancy Shane. Here. Martha Proctor. Here. Well, looks like we've got everybody. Now, I've been told that we're to work on fractions. Does anybody know where we should begin? Well, I was in a class that David taught once, and he said something about fraction families. He was only there one evening, and it didn't quite sink in. Yeah, I remember that, too. He was talking about uh, how we need common denominators and how to get them. Well, does anyone remember enough to refresh our memories? Well, I think I do. Say you start with one-fourth to make a fraction family. The next member would be uh, two-eighths, then three-twelfths, then four-sixteenths, and so on. I don't get it. Um, why don't you come up here to the chalkboard and show us an example? Oh, all right. All right. Say we start with the fraction of three-eighths. This is the first member of this family. Well, how do you know that? Well, three-eighths is the lowest terms. It can't be made any simpler. Oh. So it goes six-sixteenths and nine 
twenty fourths, twelve thirty seconds. Yeah, and after that would come fifteen over forty, right. and eighteen over forty eight. You get the idea. Of so, course. <laughs> well, I don't. Well, maybe it would help if you thought of them as just a series of simple numbers that are working together. Uh, the numerators all follow this pattern. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and so forth. Now, Martha, following this pattern, what would be the next number? 21. Right. Now, how did you know that? They're all three numbers apart. Right. It's the multiplication table for three. Oh, yeah, it is. All right. Now then, what about the denominators? It's the multiplication table for eight. Right again. All right. Everyone got that idea? Okay. Now, David gave me some sheets with practice examples on them, and they all work the same way. So I'll give you some time to fill out the fraction families on these sheets, and if you have any trouble, I'll be glad to help you out. Sue, so, can you help me out? Sure. Okay, now look here at the fraction three fifths. Uh -huh. Now it goes ten, six tenths, I'm sorry, and then nine okay. fifteenths, and okay. then twelve twentieths. Uh -huh. Now, what's next? Fifteen twenty fifths? Okay, you got it. Now, see, once the rate has started, it goes on forever. Uh, thanks, Sue. You're welcome. Okay. Folks, and here is uh, what we're supposed to end up with. Is everyone coming along with this? Uh, Mr. Hall. Uh, just call me Frank. Okay, Frank. What is all this for? I mean, will it help me get answers? Well, I hope so. That's the whole idea, I think. Uh, let's see, all right? When you start to solve an addition or subtraction of uh, fraction problems, what is the first thing that you uh, think about? Well, you've got to find the common denominator. Right. Now, what does that mean? Well, you can't add or subtract fractions that don't have the same denominator. No, you can't. Now, do you know why you can't? Well, it's just what sort I've of always been told. Well, you've been told right, but does anyone understand the idea behind that? You mean the denominator's like a name? Is that what you mean? Yes. Tell me some more. Okay. Here it is. The denominator is the name. If I add 5 apples and 12 apples, I get 17 apples. Now, I just add the numbers, not the names. Apples plus apples just gives you apples. Now, if I add fourths to fourths, I get fourths. But if I add fourths to fifths, I've got to find the common denominator. I've got to give them the same name. That's right. That's exactly right. All right. Now, even if you do know what the common denominator is, Look at your charts. Now, do you see anything about these families that will help you? Well, in the family for one-fourth, there's one member called five-twentieths. Right. So one-fourth can be called five-twentieths. All right. What about three-fifths? Well, another name for three-fifths is twelve-twentieths. Right again, Todd. Now, when we use their new names, we can add them together and find an answer expressed in yeah, that's what I was trying to say before. Uh, adding five twentieths and twelve twentieths is like adding five apples and twelve apples. Right, right. All right, does everyone see that idea? All right, now it's time to turn the corner. Now we've got to see how we can use this in actual computation. Okay, now 20 in this case is a multiple of 4, which is the denominator for 1 fourth. Martha, are you following this? Oh, I'm okay. Go on. Yes? Okay. 20 is a multiple of 5, which is the denominator for 3 fifths. Actually, 20 is the smallest number that both 4 and 5 will divide evenly, or looked at it from another direction. 20 is the smallest number for which both 4 and 5 are multiple factors. Is that what the book calls the least common multiple? Yes, sometimes they just say LCM. Well, I can usually find the least common multiple just by the numbers involved. Oh, well, I'm sure you can, but uh, what this whole thing shows is the math behind this idea. You mean it has something to do with where they are in the family? Yes, that, that's it, absolutely. In the family of three-fifths, twelve-twentieths is the fourth member. So to bring it to that point in the family, I must multiply by four, right? In the family of one-fourth, five-twentieths is the fifth number, so I multiply by five, okay? Let's see 
how we use this uh, to solve a problem. Uh, Sue, when you start to work on a problem uh, like this, what is the first thing that you say to yourself? Well, I ask myself what number 7 and 4 both go into. Right, or what number is a multiple of both 4 and 7. Uh, Martha, what's the answer? Uh, 4 and 7, uh, 28. Good. Now, can both of these numbers be expressed as a fraction with 28 as the denominator? Sure. What do your charts say about that? Uh, can you find a member of each family that has 28 as a denominator? Now, in order to change 4 into 28 times multiply by 7, right? So I'll just put this number up here so I'll remember it. All right. Now, in order to change 7 into 28 times multiply by 4, I'll just write that number here. All right. Now, it's just a matter of simple arithmetic, which you all can do. But be sure you do the same thing to the numerators that you do to the denominators. Fractions are very jealous. What does he mean by that? Well, he's trying to say that the numerators have to change the same amount as the denominators. I get 33.28. What's wrong, Bill? Did I make a mistake? No, no, you didn't make a mistake. I just noticed that you can get the common denominator by multiplying the two original denominators. In this problem, it would be 4 times 7. Does that always work? Well, yes. Uh, it always gives you a common denominator. It is not always the least common denominator. Well, that has to work. If you're looking for a multiple of those two numbers, well, you can be sure they're in there by multiplying them together. That's what multiples and factors are. Mm -hmm. What did he just say? Well, he just said that a common multiple means a number that has two numbers as factors. If you multiply 4 times 7 in order to get 28, you know the 4 and the 7 are in there because you put them in there. All right, now what I said is you can't always count on it being the smallest or the least common multiple. If it isn't the least common multiple, you may want to work on the answer some more to express it in the lowest terms. Got it? Uh, no, but I'm working on it. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's try another one. Let's uh, let's see. Uh, we will do two thirds uh, plus two fifths. Uh, Todd, you come up here and do this one. <laughs> All right. Well, first of all, we have to find the common denominator. I really know what that means now, don't you? <laughs> sure. So, uh, look on the chart for two-thirds. You see that what is it called? Ten-fifteenths. Two-fifths. So, if we call two-thirds ten-fifteenths, two-fifths six-fifteenths, I'll add them together and get sixteen-fifteenths. That's perfect, Todd. Thanks. Hmm. Uh, Sue, now, come up here and show us the traditional way to work this problem. The traditional way? Well, just work it the way you normally would. Okay, I guess I know the traditional way, but normally I just work it out in my head. Well, write it down if you can so we can see how you solve it. Okay, well, with 3 and 5, I know the common denominator is 15 by multiplying 5 times 3 and then 5 times 2, which gives me 10. And then with 2 fifths, I know the common denominator is 15. Also, by multiplying 3 times 5 and 3 times 2 equals 6, so that gives me 16 15. Super. Well, thanks. But I wouldn't leave the number at 16 15, so I'd reduce it. Good. Then what would the answer be? Uh, that would be 1 and 1 15. Just when I thought I was getting it, now you have to start reducing. I don't understand that at all. Well, I'm sorry, Martha, but you're going to have to wait till next time to find out. Uh, everyone, just work on this work that we've done tonight. Get it cold, and then next week we'll be able to move on. Okay? okay. okay. See you all next week. Okay. Here are some things you should remember from this scene. One, to add or subtract fractions, you must first find a common denominator. Two, you add or subtract only the numerators. Three, to find a common denominator, find a number that is a multiple of both the original denominators. Four, to find a new numerator, multiply the original number by the same number you multiplied the original denominator by to get the new denominator. A shortcut to this rule is a common denominator can always be found by multiplying the original denominators together. Remember what Frank said? 
fractions are jealous. What you do to one term, you must do to the other. Hey, uh, Todd, you think you could give me a ride down at 4th and Broadway? Well, sure, Bill. Yeah, I go right by there on the way home. Stop in and see a friend. All right. Let's find out what happens. Tonight I've got to meet a fellow downtown in about half an hour. See you later. Sure. What are you going to make that out of? Well, I found this remnant at the stitchery shop, uh -huh. but it's only three and three-fourths yards, but it's a really nice lilac poplin. Is that going to be enough material? Well, it says here that the blouse needs a yard and a third, and the skirt needs two and a half yards, so all together that's three full yards and a third plus a half. Wait, wait, wait. On the chart it says one half equals three-sixths, and one third is two-sixths. So that's uh, five six. Oh, you're right. So that's three four yards plus five six more. Well, that's not quite enough. How did you get that so fast? I just compared the numbers on the chart just like you did. I mean, five six equals ten twelfths and three fourths is nine twelfths. Well, one twelfth. That's not very big. I guess you can do something with it, huh? Yeah, I can cheat somewhere. And if I can't figure it out, I'll just use the red. Wouldn't it be easier to keep a record of, of how many miles you've run than well, yeah. to try to figure it out? You know, I guess so. You'd have to do some figuring anyway. All right. Well, let's do here. Let, let's hear it again. Okay. There's you know, one one course you jog is two and one fourth miles, right? Right. You know what you said? And another one is around the post office. That's two and a half miles. All right. Two and a half. Right. And the longest one now is around the fairgrounds. That's three and one third miles. Right. Three and a third. Yeah. Now, I run one of them every night, a different one every night, and I always do them in the same order, but because there are three different courses, see, I never run the same distance from one week to the other. Each week I run two of the courses two times and the other one three times. Well, that sounds and, logical. Yeah. <laughs> when, of course, the uh, weeks I run the three and one third one around the fairgrounds three times, I run farther than I do the other well, weeks. Well, that's why I say it would be easier to keep a record. I'll tell you what, let's uh, figure it out. We'll figure out the shortest one first. Okay. All right. So you say you run the shortest distance would be two and one-fourth, three times a week. Right. right. All right. So that would be six and three-fourths. Right. And then two and a half miles twice, that five. would be five. And three and one-third miles twice would be six and two-thirds. Mm -hmm. So six and three-fourths, five and six and two-thirds. All right, now we've got to find a common denominator would be twelve. Twelve, all right. Yeah. Uh, five, six, five, well, five, six, and let's see. Well, I've got seventeen and seventeen twelfths. Is that right? Seventeen and right. That's what I got. Now, seventeen twelfths is one and five twelfths, so that would be eighteen and five Twelve. Now, right. that's the shortest distance you can run in a week. Well, you know, whatever I run seven days a week now, some Sundays I sleep late, I don't run. What would it be? On those Sundays, it would be two times two and one-fourth, okay. or four and a half, plus five, plus the six and two-thirds. What Third. would that be? All right, so that would be four, four and six, let's say six five, is what we're going for six here. Four. So, yeah, that would be the five, common denominator. Six. Uh, Fifteen and seven six is what I got. So that would be sixteen right. and one six mile. And and to figure out how far I would run when I run the seven days a week and run the longest course three times, you'd add three and one third to the sixteen and one six. All right. Let's so sixteen see. one six. That would three, be one, the one third, third is two six. Right. So it would be sixteen and six plus and three and Two six nineteen three six. Hey, how about that? Nineteen oh. and one half miles. That's a Holy long cow, way. that's a long way. Right now, <laughs> let's see the weeks when I run the two and a half mile course three times. I wonder how far that would be. Well, <laughs> we got to forget see. that. I need to get on home. <laughs> <here. laughs> too far for you, huh? <laughs> too far. Okay. Come well, on, we can figure it out yeah, in the car let's, anyway. Let's get yeah. out of here. <clears throat> that's a long way. 20 miles a week. Oh, I'm used to it. Though Bill's method of jogging is a little crazy, you should be able to see the repetition of the addition and how it applies to what we have learned in the preceding scenes. 
A few of the key words in this scene were altogether, compare, and difference. Altogether is a key to know when to add. Compare and difference are keys to know when to subtract. Remember that in everyday life there are no signs to tell you when to add or subtract. So the importance of key words is to help you understand the math behind these words. Another thing to remember is when adding or subtracting mixed numbers, the whole numbers and fractions can be done by considering the whole numbers and fractions separately, then putting them together. Also, a fraction that has a numerator larger than the denominator expresses a quantity larger than one. Well, that's enough for this time. I hope you enjoyed this program and will learn from those to follow. Until next time, this is Steve Wise saying, see ya.